Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. All, All the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. Great. Amen. Amen. I just want to start off by saying from the Psalms, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. It's when I hear that, it's saying to us that we need to like command ourselves to realize the day that the Lord He had made this day, despite what we're going through, despite what we have been through, we have to rejoice in the Lord and know that He has done it for us mm -hmm. and he has made this day so we need to rejoice in him and be glad in him because he amen. amen but there are times i know for me there are times when i wake up in the morning and i look at the day and i'm like i don't feel like rejoicing mm -hmm. i don't feel like i want to be glad I don't I don't feel like I'm ever adequate enough to do what God has called me to do because I look at my life and I feel that I've done so many mistakes I feel mm. that I, I I've done so many so much things where how can God love me how can God use me I'm not sure if anyone has ever felt this way oh yes or or they feel that how can I do these? How can I do what God has called me to do? Because I made a mistake. I've sinned against God and I have sinned against others. But when I look in God's word, he showed me time and time again, you are not perfect. Mm -hmm. You are not adequate enough. Mm. You are adequate in me yes what i have done for you yes oh hallelujah he sh he's shown us that many times if you look at abraham abraham he came to abraham told abraham i will make you a great nation he promised yes. abraham and said i will make you a great nation mm -hmm. Amen. but abraham looked at himself and said i am an old man mm. my wife is an old woman how can this be mm. abraham heed the words of his wife i'm not saying that uh, us men are not to listen to what our wife has said but he listened to what his wife has said and he laid with his wife's servant mm -hmm. showing that he did not trust what god was going to do right come on come on right he basically Basically, putting God in a box. Mm. Saying that how, can God, how can God make a great nation from me, an old man, and, and my wife, an old woman? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God said, I'm going to do this. Despite how Abraham, how Abraham did not trust in him, he still used Abraham. And all his faults that Abraham had. He yes. had used him. And it shows me that all my faults that I have, God still can use me. Yes, yes he sir. can. A lot of times I hear people say, you're not a Christian. Mm. You're a grease can. Mm. Oh, my. When you hear that you're a grease can. You feel like you're the mo utmost dirtiest thing ever. Mm. My Lord. Nothing where nothing can hold on because you can't hold on to grief. Grief no, that's slips right. out. Slips out, especially bacon grease. Come it on, gets minister. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it gets everywhere. <laughs> it gets on your hands. Come on now. And it just and it's hard to wash off. It's a mess. It's a big mess. But <laughs> God who sent mm. his son mm. has cleaned off that grease thank you jesus, jesus. So the mess that you have created 
He oh. has washed that away. Mm. Thank you. I thank you, Father. Thank you. We look at mm. Psalms 51. It was a cry. It was a plea from David to the Lord for him. For what David has done, where David has mm. plotted where David has Mm -hmm. schemed, where David has committed adultery, where David has committed murder. Mm. And David, realizing what he has done, he has erred. He went to God in repentance. Yes, Yes. he did. He sought God's face. Yes. And he turned to God and said, Please forgive me. Mm-hmm. Please, mm-hmm. Lord, wash me clean. Yes. He said, he said, you do not take, you do not, you do not take pleasure in burnt af- offering. Mm-hmm. You care for my broken heart. My Lord. He said, he wants, God does not look for these sacrifices that we make and say yes he looks in us for us to, for our repentance he looks our, for our broken heart a broken yes. spirit and when yes. he has seen that in us he accepts that from us mm. and then he will accept our offerings yes. made to him yes so when we realize what we have done wrong we ask god for his forgiveness Jesus. We plead to him for his forgiveness. And we know when we have asked him that, he will forgive us and wash us clean. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, The word says, therefore, he had been made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become merciful and faithful, the high priest in the service of God, to make procreate petition for the sins of the people for because he himself suffered when tempted he is able to help those who were being tempted mm. that. and also writes it's first john 2 1 to 2 my little children i am writing these things to you saying that you may not sin mm. but if anyone does sin we have an advocate, advocate. with the Father, Come yes. on. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation mm-hmm. for our sins. Yes. And not for ours only, but also mm. for the sins of the whole, the whole world. world. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Jesus was brought here and was tempted, the words, and he was tempted, the words. Yes. But even though he was tempted, he did not sin. Did not mm-hmm. sin. But Jesus understands when we do sin, he has given us a way out. But even oh, come on, preach. we do sin, he understands that. Yes. And he goes before the Father and he pleads our case. Yes. And says, Lord, <laughs> they're just people. They're mm. just human beings. I know what they have gone through. I myself have felt it. Yes. Please, God, forgive them. Mm. My Lord. My Lord. Even Thank when you, we God. look at, we look at, many times we feel that we can't be enough. We have to still be careful. Because even in our moment of weakness, Satan is out there looking mm. to destroy us even more, to use what we have done, what we use what we have done yes. to say, look at you. God does not want you. Mm. God cannot use you. God wow. cannot, Jesus. God cannot, Hallelujah. God cannot. My God. God cannot take a hold of you. How can you do anything because mm. you're vile, you're dirty, Woo! And every single time you have done something, you keep doing it again. My Lord. But Lord, that reminds me of when Peter denied Jesus. 
Yes, Jesus yes. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded has demanded mm. to have you, that mm-hmm. he might sift you like a wheat. But yeah. I have prayed for Pray. prayed for you that your faith Thank may you. not fail. Thank you. And God. when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter mm-hmm. said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to both prison and to death. Mm. And Jesus said, I tell yeah. you, Peter, come on. The rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. My Lord. Peter denied Jesus Christ. He denied it. But God still used him. God still used him to to create, to build his church upon. That's right. Yes, he did. So there's two ways we can go about this. We could have did what Judas did. Mm. He betrayed Jesus, Mm -hmm. was remorseful, but never sought repentance. And he then My God. But Peter sought repentance. Yes. And God used him. I want to go the way of Peter. Hallelujah. And have God to use me. Because the devil is out there trying mm. to trap me and to send me to hell with him. Mm. I am not going there. The Bible says for us to be sober-minded. Mm-hmm. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion. Yes. Seeking mm. someone to devour. Resist, wow. resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Yes. We are all going through the same suffering. Amen. It may be different. It may seem different, but we are all being, being going, we are all going through this. Yes. We are not in this alone. The Bible yes. shows us that many times, many people have gone through this. But we just need to just reflect and pause. And when we pause, we begin to pray and we know that God is able to use us despite all our flaws and all our iniquities. Mm. He's able to continue to use us as long we seek repentance, we seek his faith, and we ask for that forgiveness. And he will forgive us. Yes. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Thank you, Minister Steve. Hallelujah. He walked. He walked all around my message. I got right. time for me. A couple of times, I was getting ready to say, "You be quiet." <laughs> Get ready to preach my message. Amen. <laughs> Praise Thank God. You. God bless Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That was awesome. Amen. Thank you for that. I needed that. Thank you for that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Elder LeMay, would you join us and share with us a scripture that will be the basis of this morning's message? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We already went to church. We already went to church. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to be reading from the NLT, First John, chapter 4. It says, discerning false prophets. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of an antichrist, mm-hmm. which you heard is coming into the world as indeed is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world viewpoint and the world listens to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. 
If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know when someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Love one another. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Yes. Anyone who loves is a child of God <clears throat> excuse me, and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world, that we may have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us the spirit of truth that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen in, with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who confess that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And we live in God. Our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we will face him with confidence because he lives like Jesus here in this world. Mm. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. Mm. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced the perfect love. We love each other because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, we can see if we don't if we don't love people, we can see how can we love God whom we cannot see. And his and he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing. Reading of his inspired word on today. Amen. 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 Praise God. And here excited to come to us. Praise God, her video is on. She's ready to preach. Oh. She's ready to Amen. minister. Amen. God bless her as she comes. I can't Woo. see her video. Apostle <laughs> Melvita. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. 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 All Amen. praise due to unto go. our God today. Amen. Thank you, Minister Amen. Stephen Lord. I want you to know you blessed me blessed me with that word of encouragement. I am truly encouraged because God sees our faults and our flaws, and he still sent Jesus to be an advocate for us. So mm. when the enemy goes and says, you see what she's doing? You see what he's doing? God says, you know what devil muzzle up? Mm. They, got an, they got the best attorney in the universe. Yes. And the Bible says, who can lay a charge against the elect of, elect God? of God? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody, because Jesus was our propitiation. He was the substitute that God needed to pour his wrath out on so that he didn't have to pour it out on us. us. We talked about that this morning. This How morning, much yes. love does God have for us that he would wrap himself in flesh, allow himself to be crucified? Allow his wrath to be poured out on himself so that he would not have to do it for us. Oh, the love of the Father. Mm. Amen. Amen. I dare say I know no human that would do that for me. Amen. I don't care how much we say we love. When we talk about love, we talk about God because God is perfect love. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to segue into my message this morning, and, and I just want to say this before I give you a summary. We all know how important keys are, right? Amen. We need, we need yeah. keys because things have locks, amen, right. and in order to open the lock, you need a key. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to bring you five keys from the scripture this morning uh, pertaining to um, what we read our text this morning from the scriptures I'm going to share with you today and we should then be able to learn about the origin now I want you to write down B 
these words that I emphasize. And I don't want you to write down the whole word. You don't have to. But I want you to write down the first letter of each one of these words. And when you get it written down, I want to know what it spells. Just somebody <laughs> tell me. Okay, we're going to see about the origin. That's word number one of mm -hmm. love. Okay. We're going to talk about the power. That's the next word of mm -hmm. real love. We're going to talk about the evidence. That's the next word of real mm -hmm. love. We're going to talk about the need. That's the next word for real love. And we're going to talk about the sway of real love. Sway is the mm -hmm. word. Can anybody tell me what those letters spell? Open. Okay. That's what keys open. do. Amen. That's mm -hmm. what keys, keys open. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And so this is the basis. This is the foundation for the message today. Keys that open. Mm -hmm. In today's text, John places us or before us, I should say, five particular facts or keys about faith, hope, and especially love that we should examine carefully. We must accept the facts of love so that we can enter into the realm of God's love and demonstrate it as best as we can with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. We can't, even, we can't even demonstrate love without the Holy Spirit. We might think we are, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not the God kind of love. I want right. to talk about this realm known as fellowship. And the Bible says that we should have fellowship both with God and each other. Mm -hmm. The facts surrounding this realm counteract and contradict every single rule of love that society tells us. Right. Amen. Right. Where love comes from, how love works, how you can tell why we need it, why should we give it, are all excellent questions. And the text that we have today answer every single one of those questions. Mm -hmm. God tells us above all, he tells us about the love of God and how powerful it really is. Yes. He lets us to know that we must face the facts of love. Amen. Yes. Right. Facts are the keys to the greatest reality we could ever want to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The text opens the door to a realm of real love and joy. So let us take a look at each one of these keys I'm going to bring before you specifically. We're going to talk about the key of origin, the origin of real love, the letter O. Where does love come from? Well, we know by reading the word that love comes from and is God. God, Amen? yes. Yes. According to what we read today, love comes from God. Mm -hmm. I personally wonder about this because you know what? I've always felt that I had the capability to love even before the relationship I had with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. You know, you, you may have met people who were very loving and very caring, and yet they're not Christians. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So how can God then be the author of love? Well, there are two ideas that I want us to ponder here. First of all, what kind of love are we talking about? That's the right. first thing. Right. And the second thing is how God's love affects the world. And I want you to take note that I'm making a distinction between the world's kind of love and God's kind of love. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because right. there is a difference between the love of God and the love of humanity. Yes. You understand this morning that God's love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. There is nothing hanging on the love of God. Mm. Right. Mm. We do not have to do anything to receive it. Yeah, we right. read that in John 3 16 and everybody knows that God so loved the world. He so loved the world. He didn't say he loved the world because of this, that, or the other. It just says God so loved the world. And because he loved the world, it caused him to move into action. Love is an action word. Love will cause you to do something. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the God kind of love 
will cause you to do those things which are pleasing to God. We know the human kind of God, has, uh, excuse me, the human kind of love have driven people to do some awful things. Mm-hmm. Right. People, people have killed for the human kind of love. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. Out of jealousy, out of anger. So we see a distinction right there. The second idea that, that I want us to think about it really is actually a question. What happens if God's love leaves the world? Mm. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a world without the love of God? Mm, Jesus. Understand that the day that God takes his love away, the earth will become hell. Hell, yes. Yep. And if you don't know what hell is, or if you need a description of hell, and I'm not even going to mention the flames and the fire and brimstone. Hell is the absolute absence, absence. of yes. God. The absolute absence of the presence of God. Remember, because God is love. The oh. very essence of God is love. And when you remove that, there is absolute hell. Yes. Therefore, the absence of God would be the absence of all love. Love, yes. Amen? Amen. Without God, this world would have no love whatsoever, mm -hmm. even from the good people that I mentioned earlier. Amen? We know, like I said, we know the good people. We know the caring people. We know people who seem to be loving. But without the love of God, is it really love? Because love originates we're talking about the origin now. Love comes from God. God's existence in our world allows us to enjoy the love we have, and it even opens the door for us to experience a greater love. Hallelujah. Amen. To God. Amen. The unconditional love of God allows us to experience a greater love. Now, I realize that I did have the capacity or the capability to love before knowing Jesus. But you know what? The love that I had was a corruption of God's love. Mm. It was selfish. And you might say, oh, no, those people aren't selfish. I guarantee you. Yes, they are. Mm. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Because the love that they have, no matter how much they think it's coming from a good place, always has conditions. Mm -hmm. They want to be noticed. They want people to say how loving they are. You know, it, it comes with something attached. It is not unconditional. unconditional. Love without God will always look for what we can get out of it for ourselves. Mm, Jesus. Jesus. That's the love that comes from man. Amen. Right. God is the beginning, the very origin of love. And only through him does love even exist. Without him, even my worthless tries at love would not have existed. No. Amen. Right. Because I thought I was a good person. I was a nice, caring, quote unquote, loving person. But where was God in the mix? Mm. Amen. So right. it was a counter, the counterfeit love because it was not unconditional. Love does just not pop up out of nowhere. Amen. And just appear between two people. I'm sorry, but that's not love. That's called lust. Mm. Make a note of that. All right. You don't just fall in love. You're not uh, attracted to somebody and love them because the way they look. You know, it, it, it's lust first. I'm sorry. It's lust. Preach. And you can deny it all you want to. But Preach. if you don't know anything about the person and if the love of God is not in you, you don't love them right off the bat. Oh, it was love at first sight. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Lust no. At you, first had, sight. you had a yeah. desire for that person. And love didn't have anything to do with it. Mm. Okay, We got some now. Love still don't have nothing to do with it. Hello. I Hello. know I'm speaking truth. I know I got it right. You see, the realm of joy and love is called Fellowship. fellowship and it must start first with God's love mm. if God's love is not in it you don't have genuine love mm -hmm. you may think you love that person 
but you got conditions. See, in order for them to get that kind of love, they got to give you something. You expect something, and they expect something. My That's God. not love. That's not love. Real love comes from God in the form of unconditional Conditional. love. Yes, yes. Here's the second key I got for you today. I want to tell you about the power of real love. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read in your hearing here verses 9 through 11, because we need to know how real love or the power of real love works. We already know that it works unconditionally, and here's the word that backs that up. It says that God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world that we might have eternal life through him. This mm -hmm. is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us mm -hmm. and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. You see, mm. Brother Stephen, how close you were in my word. Dear friends, John says, since God loved us that much, surely we ought to love each other. Mm. OK. Mm. If we say we love God, then we should be demonstrating the love of God towards one another. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. Attach, right? Amen. The text tells us very plainly what real love looks like. Mm. Real love, my brothers and sisters, looks like Jesus Christ. Come on here. Amen. And his willingness to give up his life for mankind. I don't want to sound sexist for humankind, okay, because he gave up his life for everyone. The scripture even uses a specific word for this action. God called it a sacrifice. Mm. You can't say you love somebody and you're not willing to make sacrifices for them. Mm. Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm asking everybody to check where they fit in this litmus test. And see if you're making sacrifices for the people you claim you love. Mm. If you're not willing to sacrifice, and a sacrifice means willing to jeopardize or put in jeopardy or lose something that you count as precious to you. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to do that, then you don't have love. Mm. You might have something like love, but you don't have love. Right. Amen. Right. God says that Jesus sacrificed his own human life and his physical body to take away mankind's sins. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Jesus did not ask us for anything in return for dying. Amen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he did not charge everyone for taking away their sin. Jesus didn't say, well, if I take away your sin, this is what you got to do. No, he did it for everyone. All may not receive it. All may not accept it, but he did it for all. Yes. Amen. Amen. God did not say, I'm only going to do it for this group of people over here because I know if I do it for them, they're going to accept and receive it. He didn't say that. He says, mm -hmm. whether you receive it or not. It's going to be done. And at whatever stage in your life, should you decide, even if it's with your dying breath, that you believe that Jesus Christ is my son, that you believe that he lived and he died and he rose again, I will receive you because that is the sacrifice I'm willing to pay for you. God has said that we are precious to him. He has said in his word that we are the apple of his eye. When God says apple of his eye, people, he's not talking about fruit. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. The apple of your eye is your pupil. If pupil. you don't have a pupil and an iris, you can't see. Right. Amen. Right. God says we are the very essence of sight to him. We mm. are the jewel in his crown. Amen. Mm. This is how precious we are to him. And he was willing to wrap himself because, you know, the Bible says without the remission of sin, with, without, excuse me, the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Well, shedding of blood, God could not do in spirit. And we know that God is a spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. So he had to design and develop a body so that he could come physically mm -hmm. and die. Mm hmm. And the very 
essence of God, which is love, turned his back on himself as he hung on the cross. Jesus right. said, my God, why have you forsaken me? The God that has promised us, I will never leave you nor forsake you, forsook his, his own, own one and begotten God. for yeah. us. For such a worm as we are, as the minister said this morning, undeserving. We don't deserve this. But God says, I love you. Yes. And because I love you, I say your word. Yes. This is the end that I am willing to go to, to bring you back to myself, to bring you back to the position that I originally created you for. And that is to rule and to reign on the earth with me, to subdue and have all things under your feet. That's why I created you. And I will forgive your sin and love you unconditionally. God, I thank you. I thank, I thank him. And anybody that gives it a half a thought needs to say thank you right now. Amen. With thank your mics you. on or off, you need to thank God for his love. Amen. Amen. That he didn't ask us for anything. He just said, here, it's free. Come and take it. Jesus even said, no greater love can anyone have than to lay down their life for their friends. And God says that we are his friends. Come on here, Amen. somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are friends of the most high God. God calls us friends. We sing the song, I am a friend of God. Oh, yes, we are. God called Abraham friend. Amen. And Jesus said to his disciples that if you're a slave, you don't know what the master is doing, but because I call you friends, you Amen. know what I'm doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And Jesus did just say it with his mouth because it's easy to give lip service. He Amen. lived it. He lived it. Okay. God sent Jesus into the world so that humanity would have a chance at eternal life. We were never intended to die. Right. Never. And when we sin, God said, I will not have them to live in eternity in that sin. So I'm going to put a flaming sword in front of the tree of life so they cannot eat of it and live throughout eternity in sin. Sin. And then he made a way to deliver us from that sin. Yes. My God. Yes. What kind of love is this? Yes. Amen. Amen. His love is unconditional, even to the point of giving up his own son. And Jesus's love was unconditional. He did not even withhold his own, own life. Life, right? Amen. Amen. The Amen. power of real love comes from God's unconditional and limitless love. There is no limit on the love that God has. How does love work? Well, it depends on which love we're referring to, okay? Oh. Because there is a different kind of love. There's a selfish love. That's the love we practice, amen? Right. That's selfish love that focuses on uh, us and what mm -hmm. we get out of what it does, okay? Mm -hmm. This right. is not the love that, that really works, all right? Mm -hmm. This love... <laughs> I'm sorry, and I know some people sitting there going, mm -mm, that's not the kind of love I have. Oh, yes, it is. Mm. It, would, it would behoove you to tell the truth on today. All right. As we stand before his throne. We practice that love that focuses on us and what we get out of it. It does not really work at all, except in making the people around us feel used and unloved. Mm -hmm. You ever had somebody well, tell you that they love you? And when it's all said and done, all you feel is used and abused. Whoa. Left broken hearted. Nobody but me. Well, that's okay. Even if it's me, you know what? God bless you. Because I've had somebody, I've had somebody <laughs> tell me that they love me, but their actions in the end proved to be totally opposite. Totally opposite. It's all yep. about what I could do for them. Whoa. And they knew. If they told me that they loved me and I loved them back, well, they could get from me what they wanted to get from me. Uh -huh. 
Because when you love somebody, you don't withhold your bowels of mercy, okay? No, you don't no. withhold anything Amen. from the person that you love. Mm -hmm. If you love them, you are willing to give them whatever you need, whatever will make them love you even the more. And see, yes. so even on our side of it is crooked because we think we got to do something to get somebody to love us. Love us. Right. Wow. I know I'm telling the truth. I know I got it right. Yeah, Amen. you got it right. You got it right. I know I got it right. Amen. But the love that God has given to us and the love that has been shown to us through Jesus Christ, it works wonderfully because we never have to perform in order to be loved. Jesus. How about that? All right now. It is unconditional. It means I don't have to do anything to earn it. Amen. And it right. means that you don't have to do anything for me to love you. Yes. I just do. Yes. Amen. Amen. Did anybody know that kind of love where yes. you don't have to do anything? Even when you work in my nerves, I still just do. Mm. Amen. I love you in spite of the fact that you're getting on my nerves. Yes. Amen. 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 And I know Bishop, listen, I know Bishop can tell you about it because I tell him in the heart, but you know what? I need you to please just go away right now. I just I just don't even want to see you right now. I still love you. Even if I tell you while I pull my suitcase up out the basement, I got to get out of here. I got to wait for you. But I'm still here. Hello. And it'll be 14 years next month. So. Out of all of that, out of all of my leaving, out of all of him getting on my nerves, I know that it's the love of God that compels me. That's why the border is closed. Listen, <laughs> I, know, I, know you, I, I know you went and told the Lord to make sure she can't get over there easy. I know. But it's all good. It's all good. Oh, praise him. And we can laugh, you know, and, 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 you know, if you're in a situation where you love someone, you can't tell me that there hasn't been a time when you go and you reflect and you be like, hmm, what have we here? What have I done? You know, but then you still stay because the love that you have is unconditional. Yes. When you accepted that person, you accepted them for who they are. That's the love that Amen. God gives us. Amen. Amen. God says, I know who you are. I know you stink. Amen. I know you're filthy. I know you're dirty. I know you wallowing in your sins. I know your past. And still, I sent I my love son. You. Yes. I love you. Regardless of all of that, I love you. Amen. Amen. And so what that is saying is that it, it, it doesn't matter what you do. Even when you turn your back on God, the word says you can even curse God. Jesus. And he will still love you. Yes. You can curse the name of Jesus and he will still love you. But what you can't do is curse the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Wow. That is the unpardonable sin. That's a message for another time. Amen. Because what you are saying is all the work that God has poured into you, you are denying it. And if you're denying the work of God's Holy Spirit, that means that you are none of his. Mm -hmm. And whatever the punishment is for blaspheming the Holy Spirit, you don't want. Because included in that punishment is complete and total separation, separation from, from, from the presence of God. And my God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so when God loves us unconditionally, that means that we can be who we are with mm. all of our faults. This is where the minister was stepping on my stuff this morning with all of your faults, faults and all of your flaws and still be loved. And I think that that is pretty powerful. Yes, my, it is. And unconditional love is powerful. And so when we enter into the realm called fellowship with God and with each other, we must understand this key that mm. we must love unconditionally because guess what? Nobody is perfect except Jesus. Jesus. So you're not going to find nobody perfect to love except Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. Here's your third key. The evidence of real love. How can you tell if it's real love? You can tell because real love bears witness to itself. Yes. Hello? Yes. Our scripture from verses 12 to 16 in this uh, chapter and book of John tells us that no one has ever seen God. Right. 
We heard the elders say that. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, then God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Mm -hmm. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Yes. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the father sent his son to be the savior of the world. Right. And all who confess that Jesus is the son of God have God living in them and they live in God. Mm -hmm. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. Yeah, that's the evidence. So what evidence exists for this type of love? Well, here we go. I'm going to tell you. This part of John's love text gives us at least three witnesses to Mm -hmm. the fact that real love exists and can exist within a human being. Yes. Now notice, notice you can't have this love without Jesus. You cannot have this love without God in you. What you got in you without God is not love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Right. The first witness we have to this love is the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit who takes up residence within the believer. You can tell somebody when they have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because you could check their fruit. And if you don't know what fruit I'm talking about, please take the opportunity when you can and go to Galatians, read chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Mm. Amen. Right. When people have the Holy Spirit and the love of God, the evidence will be in the fruit of the Spirit. They will Mm -hmm. exhibit the attributes and the characteristics of God by demonstrating love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right. Amen. You will see that. Amen. And I want you to understand, and I thank you for saying that, Bishop, because without love, you can't have any of the rest. Any of rest. Nope. You can't have joy without love. You can't have peace without love. You sure can't have patience. Okay, I'm a witness. Mm, My Jesus. patience already is 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 as short as a witness. Yeah. And just imagine how short it would be. It's it's like on that stick of dynamite right before it goes kaboom. That's how short my patience is. And it's even that long because of love. Love. Amen. Right. Amen. Even that Amen. little bit is because of love. We could not be kind to one another without love. We could mm-hmm. not show forth goodness. We couldn't be faithful to anybody nope. without love. Mm. You see, we have people in relationships who say that there is love, but yet they're unfaithful to their partner. Where's the love? How much do you love them when you go out and you're unfaithful to them? Where is the love? Somebody tell me. Show me Mm. where it is. And I'm speaking from experience because I had a spouse who cheated. Where was the love? Where Mm -hmm. was the faithfulness? There was no love because if there was love, then the fruit of faithfulness would have been apparent. Apparent. Wow. Yes. Hello? Yeah. So when we talk about this thing that the world calls love, I want you to know that's not what it is. I keep telling you, Amen. it's not love. Mm-hmm. It is not love because love would not allow you to go out and be unfaithful to your partner. No. Not ever, ever, ever. And as much as you thought you loved them, if somebody else can come and pull you away, where is the love? Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. But I know what I know. Okay. And I know I'm telling you. Yes. The second witness, the second witness exhibits itself in the love that Christians have for one another. And that's why the Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. Because you can feel like you love someone, but they don't have the love of God in them. What do you think the end is going to be? What do Mm. you think? When you have the love of God in you and the other person doesn't. I say that scale is unbalanced, don't you? Right. That's why the Bible says it's unequally yoked. You already going to have a hard enough time staying together with a believer. My God. But now you want to go bring in somebody that got all these worldly attributes to come in? Wow. Mm -mm. 
not love is not supposed to be that hard, brothers and sisters. My Lord. And so love of one another is a, an exhibit of this key, is this evidence of love. We have to ask that if we love one another, is it with conditions? Is it selfish? If it is, then it's not Christian love. Mm -hmm. It's not the God kind of love. And then the third witness is a person's confession of who Jesus Christ is. You know, without the love of God, you can't confess Jesus. Mm -mm. You cannot confess Jesus Christ as Lord if the love of God is not in you. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You Amen. can't even say his name honestly and with all sincerity. This is how people can use the name of Jesus as a curse word. The love of God is not in them. Amen. Right. People bandy about the name of Jesus in a way that does not honor God. You think they love God when you use the, the name of Jesus like that? Absolutely not. That's why they can do it. You know, and and don't be satisfied with the fact that you can say, I believe in Jesus. I want you to know that that's not enough mm -hmm. well, to believe in Jesus, to believe in God is not enough. You're right. The demons, the Bible says even the demons believe. So Amen. you ain't got you ain't got much up on the demons. They Amen. believe you believe the difference between you and the demons is love. You're right. Amen. That's the difference. Come on here. That's okay? the difference. Mm -hmm. You must have an honest, heartfelt profession of your belief in Jesus Christ as the son of God who came and died for you, who came to save the world and who came and rose up on the third day so that you could receive the promise of eternal life. That's the difference. Amen. Amen. These are the tangible evidences that exist in our world when God is in us. How can you tell real love exists? You should be able to see it in the lives of believers. Amen. Amen. You should see the fruit of the spirit even developing in your own life. Amen. Amen. You should be able to look at your spouse, your children, your family, and your friends. Do you expect them to do something in return for your love? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, okay. Preach. You love them, yet you tell the kids, I love you, but y'all better do your chores and make good grades. Well, you're putting conditions on your love. Amen. The husband that says he loves his wife, but she must have the dinner on the table when he gets home or he's upset. Mm, well. the, the wife that tells her husband that she, he got to live and act like how she wants, including the honeydew list that she puts in front of him before she will even be intimate with him. Where is the love? Well, so key number three says that evidence exists in favor of unconditional love, fellowship in Christ, sharing yes. our lives together must show evidence that real love exists. Yes. Evidence must be present. If evidence is not present, then there is no fellowship at all. None. Amen. Right. Amen. Here's your fourth key. The need for real love. Mm. Why do we need real love? Quite simply, we need love because love overcomes fear. Yes. Verses 17 and 18 in our scriptures today, the Bible says God is love. And all who live in love live in God. Mm -hmm. And God lives in them. Mm -hmm. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Mm. We get closer and closer to the love that God has for us, not just in perfection, but in maturity. Amen. Amen. And so the word says, so we all, excuse me, so we will not. Now, I want you to catch this. This is why we need love. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. Amen. Say that again. Mm. We need this love so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Yes. Such love has no fear because 
perfect love expels or casts out all fear. If you are afraid, if we are afraid of the judgment, it is because we have fear of punishment. Oh, my. Right. And this shows that we have not fully experienced the perfect love of God. See, if we love God, the word says, then we'll do what he commands. And if we do what he commands, we are obedient. And if we are obedient, then we don't have to worry about punishment. No. There's no fear of punishment. Punishment. None. God is not going to punish us because he loves us and he accepts our faults and our flaws. Now, if we're willfully disobedient, that's something else. We all make mistakes, okay? A mistake is a mistake. When you make a mistake, you do everything you can to correct that mistake. Mm. You can't call it a mistake and keep on doing it. Amen. Right. That's not a right. mistake. So that's a lifestyle. Mm. So, Jesus. And you can't be walking around saying, well, I can sin, and but I know that God is going to forgive me because that's what he said. Paul said, shall we sin so that sin love so can grace? abound? Yeah, no. uh-huh. So that grace can abound? God forbid. Because the Lord is going to get tired of it. He already told us that he will not Amen. always strive for us. You're not going to keep on living against what God told you to do because you think his grace is going to be sufficient. There's going to be one day where God's going to say, you know what? That's enough for you. Mm. That's enough for you because you can't possibly love me with the love that is needed, with the love that is required and reject the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we do when we sin against God. We reject the work of the Holy Spirit. Ah, Lord. Don't be caught in that kind of position. Amen. Right. Don't be caught. Experience the perfect love of God, whereby you can go to him and ask for forgiveness. We need to be fearful of the punishment. My you God. don't believe me? Go read Revelation. Go find it. As a matter of fact, you ain't got to read Revelation. Go back to the Old Testament and find out what happened when God in those times poured out his wrath. There was no substitute. Amen. If you were living ungodly, you could be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Poof, gone up in flames and smoke. Or you could be like the world that ignored God and God flooded the earth. This is the same God. You, I want you to know this is the same God. But God got tired of destroying his creation and he said, I'm going to find a way to bring them back to me. Yes. We, ought to, we ought to love him if for nothing else for that. that yes. Because I can guarantee you not one of us hearing this message today or in the future would ever be able to stand up under the punishment of God. Mm. Amen. Jesus. It's far beyond anything you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand that we don't have to be afraid. The word says. We don't have to be afraid. There's a deep need in the world that we live in today. John says, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. And trust me, there will be a day of judgment. Amen. There will be a day when everyone will be expected to answer for the life that you lived. Hello? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the life that you lived before Christ. Because that's under the blood. God is not going to drag that back up. He says he has already cast that into the sea of forgetfulness. God says that when you come to him, he forgets your sin. God has already sent his son to die for all of that. But now there is consequences for the sin that you do while you walk with God, that unrepentant sin. Amen. That's why when you recognize that you have done something against God, you need to immediately upon that recognition, go before the Lord, repent and ask for forgiveness. So God does not call you up on that later. Mm -hmm. And I have taught you all before, and I need you to understand that it is not God, the father who will sit in the seat of judgment, but Jesus Christ is his right to judge. Why is it his right to judge? Because he is the one that took the punishment. Yes. He took the punishment, so it's his right to call you on the carpet. Yes. It is his right to point out to you that you sinned even after I died for you. 
Now, I've died for those sins too, but I need you to tell me why, knowing all that I did unconditionally for you. Why did you do that? Why? Why would you do that? Didn't you love me back? Mm, Wow. The word of God will not have us to be ignorant about this thing called love. Amen. He will not have us to be ignorant that there will be fear by some in the day of judgment, those who Mm. don't understand nor love God. Mm. The love of God has absolutely no fear in it at all. And if the love of God is in you, you have no reason to fear. Amen. And I'm not talking about the reverential fear that we all should have of God. We should all reverence God. You need to have reverence for the one who gave you breath and who can take it at any moment. Mm. He's sovereign. He doesn't owe us any explanations. Here's the thing. God gave us a book full of explanations as to why he is who he is and why he does what he does. But he doesn't have to. He's God. Mm. He don't have to tell us nothing. But he did because he wants us to understand him. And he's given us this limited capacity of understanding that we have. He still has made it so even with that limited capacity, we can still understand. Amen. Amen. Right. We will be without excuse. Period. And that's why it's a good idea when you recognize your sin, you ask for forgiveness. And first John one and nine says that when we ask for forgiveness and we repent that God is faithful, faithful. and just. Yes, he, he is. Give us our sin. He will forgive us and cleanse us too of all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be walking in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There Thank is no Jesus. righteousness outside of God. Yes. There is none, none right. None. There is none right. No, not, not one. one. Mm-hmm. The only righteousness we have is in, in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Ah. And, and guess what? It's the righteousness of God we receive. Right. We receive God's. God is right about everything. Yes, he is. And that's what we receive in Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. What, well, look, look at these gifts, man. I'm telling you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. But, but, but let me let me get. Mm, come on here, God. You know we live in a day and a time where some people are ignorant to the wrath of God, and mm. some people are ignorant to the fact that they should be in fear and in awe and in reverence of a holy God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amen. Right. And you know what? I'm going to say this: it's either out of choice or out of innocence. And we already know that there's nobody innocent. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. We're not even born into innocence. The Bible says that we're born in sin. Into sin. And shaped in iniquity. Amen. People lack a reverence and a fear of God because they have no idea of what's coming. Hello. Hello. I mean, you got to assume that they just really don't understand what's coming down the pipe because if they knew, they would change their walk. Mm. Hello? Mm. If you understood what is coming, the absence of God, the absence of the presence of God. Jesus. If you understood that the Bible says that for all eternity, there will be torment, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not, oh, you're going to do this for a little while and then it'll stop. No. There's no such thing as time when it comes to that. Time only exists for us. And when we leave this place that counts time, we will be in a place called eternity that never, ever, 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 I don't care how many ever you put there, it will never end. Never. And so it is for the believer, and so it is for the non-believer. In total and complete Complete. darkness. Yes. fear forever, in torment and torture for eternity. Who wants that? Mm -hmm. And so don't you believe those people that say, oh, well, you know what? It's okay. Hell can't be a bad place. All my friends are going to be there, and you, you need to pray for them because they obviously have the wrong concept of hell. Amen. It is not going to be a party. 
it is not going to be a party. You're not going to be sipping on your, your favorite drink for all eternity. You're not going to be telling jokes and laughing. Amen. Jesus. And we got a parable where the man died and went to hell. And when he realized how bad hell was, first of all, he was thirsty. He mm -hmm. wanted some water. And he asked Lazarus, just take your finger and dip it in some water and put it on my tongue. And Lazarus was like, I can't do that. He said, well, then go to my brothers and tell them that they need to do what is right because they don't want to come here. And, and Lazarus said, well, they've already been told, just like you were told. <laughs> and you made a choice. And they have to make a choice, too. And so I say to you today, don't make the wrong choice. Mm. Amen. Because right. hell for all eternity is very real. It is not some um, ubiquitous, uh, uh, ethereal thing, you know, that can't be grasped. It's real. If you don't believe me, I'm not even going to tell you. Live against God and see what happens. I don't want nobody to go to hell. Nobody. Nobody. Mm. Don't curse anybody to go to hell. Don't wish that on your worst enemy. That's why God tells us, pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. Hell is not a place that you, if you have the love of God, you don't want that for anybody. Yes. I, I don't care what they did to you. Jesus. You don't go to hell. Amen. You don't. Right. Because if you want that, if you can find in your heart to want somebody to go to hell, then you need to work on the love of God in you. The love of God would never desire that for anyone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. So we got some people who will <laughs> come to know who God is. We will have some people who will find out what real love is because there are people walking around right now who don't have a clue. But I tell you one thing, there will come a day when everyone will fall to their knees mm. and find out that God is supreme. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Bible says, every knee shall bow in earth, in heaven, and under the earth. Mm. I think that, that covers everywhere. Yes, it, yes. The word says, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Now, there will be some who do it by force, and there will be some who do it willingly, but everybody's going to do it. Amen. Everybody. The most terrifying thing would to be standing before a holy God and not confessing him to be Lord. See, people need the real love of Jesus Christ so that they will not have to fear the almighty God we serve. We mm. need to have fellowship and we can only have fellowship if we have real love. Real love. Amen. Yes. Amen. Real love give us the confidence we need to have in us to give to others. Amen. Yes. With the love Amen. of God, fear disappears yes yes i'm gonna ask you a question you don't have to answer me but are you afraid of the judgment day mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus. and i'm gonna tell you something and i'm gonna answer this very clearly if i didn't know jesus i would be afraid yes so if you're afraid then you need to work on your knowledge of who god is mm. you need to ask god to pour out the god kind of love in your life and here we are at the last key and I'm not going to be here long. I'm about to wrap this thing up. The fifth key is the sway of real love. Mm -hmm. And so you ask the question, why should I give it? Well, the answer very plainly is Jesus did. Yes, he did. He did it first. And if it was good enough for Jesus to do, then certainly it's good enough for us. Now, sway. Let me, let me explain what that is. There must be a sway. Sway meaning to pull or an attraction. Amen. Mm. So there must be an attraction when real love exists in your life. Let me tell you, people will be drawn to you. Hello. Mm. Listen to what the text says very carefully. We love each other because he loved us first. Okay, so we know we were, drawn, we were, we were drawn to him because he loved us. Amen. Mm. Yeah. And right. if someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow a believer, believer. Guess what? That person is a liar. Yes, they are. You see, the, the, the word of God doesn't mince any words. It's straight up, you a liar. Period. Mm. And you can't say you're not a liar because God says you're a liar. That's not Apostle Mel saying you a liar. The word of God says you're a liar. And if you call God a liar, well, you know what? I probably don't even want to stand next to you. Mm. 
Jesus. Because the word of God says, let God's word be true. true. And, and every man. man. Liar. A liar. Amen. So if Amen. you're saying God's word is not true, then guess what? That makes you a liar. Mm, Jesus. And the Bible tells us that the liars will take the first part in the lake of fire. My well, you're Lord. going to hell if you're a liar. Mm. Okay, if you are an unrepentant liar, you got your ticket. Okay, your ticket has been purchased. Unless you repent, and, and notice I'm letting you know that all of this is based on, this standing and this punishment is based on unrepentant Pentance. sin. Yes. And you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has called you out of the world into his marvelous light. You have the option of repentance. And when you repent and ask for forgiveness, it's like you never did it. We are mm. just, just as if we didn't sin. You've heard us say that time and time again. Amen. Mm. We don't have to be on our way to hell. And understand that this word is for us. God is telling us, don't take for granted. Because see, when you exhibit these things, you cannot say you are of God. No. You know, we say that, oh, it once you're saved, God cannot take your salvation. But let me tell you something. You can destroy it. You. My. You can. By rejecting the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And how do you do that? You reject the love of God. God. You reject that Jesus is the son. You reject everything that God says. When you reject that, guess what? You weren't saved. You weren't saved in the first place. The word of God tells us they when Jesus asked Peter, when this when when Jesus was teaching on um, the the blood, the blood and and the body. OK, and he said that you will of my body, eat of my flesh and you will drink, will of, my drink blood. of my blood. And, and, and some of the disciples, not the 12, but some of the disciples, because we do understand there were more than 12 disciples yes. walked away saying this is a hard saying. Who, who can know this? And they walked away because they just couldn't wrap their minds around it. They couldn't conceive of the spiritual thing that Jesus was talking about. Now, mind you, we know that the word of God is spiritual. In our spirits, we can understand. Amen. Yes. Okay. So when he started saying these things and they walked away, he turned to the 12 and he said, will you also leave me? And Peter looked Jesus dead in his eye. He said, you have the words of life. Where will we go? Mm. Mm. If you belong to God, there is no place for you to go. You don't fit in the world anymore. You only fit in the body of Christ. Mm. Jesus. Amen. All right. That's the only place you fit. And even if you walk away, the word says then you were they can walk away from us because they were never of, of us. us. OK, you can't say you belong to God and then pluck yourself out of his hand. If mm. you belong, you belong. Jesus. Amen. All uh, right. Amen. And if you can pluck yourself, that means that you didn't belong in the first, belong place. In the first place. OK, you were mm. walking in a shadow faith. You weren't walking in a real faith. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. Mm. So that's why we ought to always be examining ourselves. Amen. Make sure your mm. walk is real. Don't play with God. Do not play. Amen. Amen. The scripture goes on to say, when you say, if someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For mm. if we do not love people, we can see. How can we love God whom we cannot see? Mm. And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. See, yes. beginning with God's love for us, we have a reason to share our faith in Christ because he loved us first. Amen. And we also have a command directly from God to do so. Yes. so. Those who love God will also love each other. That's why I can so very easily tell you guys how much I love you. Yes. It comes easy. I don't have to think about it. There's no hesitation. I love you because guess what? You are of God. Little yes. children, the word says, I am of God. And because we are of God and because we belong to God, then we share that love of God for one Amen. another. So what Amen. makes, makes Jesus' 
love so precious and even irresistible to us, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because he loved us first. Yes. And he, listen, he loved us and never expected, nor will he ever expect perfection from us. Mm. Come on here. Yeah. All right. Somebody and, and the first time you make a mistake, they berate you. They walk up one side and down the other. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not perfect. Amen. And first of all, who are you to hold me to a standard of perfection? Amen. Okay. If you're not perfect, then you can't hold me perfect. And guess what? Your your idea of perfection is relative to what you know. Right. Well, maybe I'm perfect, maybe I'm perfect in my eyes, and maybe not uh-huh. in yours. Mm. It's a that's why we can't lean on our own understanding. It's about what God says, and God never told us to be perfect. He said to be mature. Sure. Yes. <laughs> When it says perfect love, it means mature love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry our sister in in Vermont had to leave. I am tying it up. I went over only by three minutes, but to God be the glory. Those of you that can hang with me, hang with me because I'm I'm wrapping it up right now. Um, So we, we understand that God loved me for me and for nothing more. That I was drawn to him because he did not expect me to perform like everyone else. Mm-hmm. He didn't expect a, a standard from me like somebody else might. That's what swayed me. Amen. That's what drew me to him. That's what made me want to know more about this Jesus. Mm. Why should we give love? Because Jesus gave love unconditionally. Amen. And because he did that, I have absolutely no right to keep him or his love to myself. Mm. I have no right to hide him. Amen. In my heart. and Never let him out. Amen. Jesus sacrificed not only himself, but he was also commanded. He has also commanded me, I should say, to give him to other people. Yes. Jesus said, you have me. I'm not going anywhere. So share me with others. You will still have the fullness of me. I don't care how much Jesus I give away. I can never give away. I can never exhaust Jesus. Mm. Amen. I'm never going to run out of Jesus. All Amen? right. All right. <laughs> so don't be stingy with Jesus. Amen. Amen. His love holds me when I feel weak. He mm. carries me. When I can't stand, he Mm. protects me from painful words and from enemies. And he gives me siblings. You guys, he gives me siblings in him to get close to and to love and to be loved. And he gives me so many other things. Mm -hmm. His love has a powerful attraction. And Mm -hmm. anyone needs love only needs to look towards him. Our love should have a, a wondrous attraction because it should be just like the love of jesus yes and real love real love will sway people to its side amen and so the, amen. the five keys each one of these keys is a critical part of god's plan for a new realm on earth called fellowship yes. and through each one of these keys god opens the door for fellowship and true joy and love among his children, otherwise known as believers or disciples or saints of God or Christians or whatever you want to call yourself. And remember that the first letter of these keys spells the word open, open. origin, power, evidence, need, and sway. God opens the door to a realm much greater than this world. Amen. He opens the door to a world of unconditional love. Real love comes from God. It is empowered through Jesus' sacrifice and it finds evidence in our lives. It is desperately needed in this world that we live in. And it is a wondrous, wondrous thing. And it attracts people to it. What an awesome God serve brothers and sisters he has opened the way to a place of true joy and peace even within a world of chaos amen Amen. so 
hopefully from this lesson, I won't even say this was a preach word. Hopefully, hopefully from this lesson, you understand these keys and you accept them. And if you are looking for a better place to live, a place with real friends and real love, then you know that you must look to Jesus Christ and God. Mm. You know that you will never find unconditional love in this world, but you will find it by getting to know Jesus. So come on in and fellowship with Jesus and find true love true joy and true peace god bless amen. you thank the holy spirit. amen thank you holy spirit praise amen. the name of the lord amen and hallelujah. amen hallelujah hallelujah we give thank god praise god. praise god hallelujah. 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 hallelujah evangelist sharon george come on in and close us in prayer this morning amen you are hallelujah okay. amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah god we bless thank you we magnify yes. you, God. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, no. God, if for nothing else, God, we heard of the love, the love oh, that no, keeps us, the love that saves, the love that protects, oh. the love that provides, the love yes. that yes. is all in all, God. Like the yes. preacher today said, it's that love that draw her, oh God, mm. yes. without expectation. With yes. nothing like what man put on us, God. You just yes, love us so. Thank you, God, Lord. From the beginning to the end, you are God. You are Alpha, yes. you are Omega, God. We thank yes. you for your word, thank God. You, we thank, thank you in this season, God, where we get so busy with the busyness of life. And we Hallelujah. talk about friends and thank family, you, God. God. We get the meter that we can measure that by. It's not mm. how we feel, God. It's mm. the fruit that it produces in us. Yes. God. May mm. we produce that fruit daily, oh yes, God, Lord. because we take yes, this Lord. word, God. May we go back, oh God, and chew on this word again and digest it and regurgitate it and chew yes. again, God. Because, Lord, mm. we need to live this. We mm. need yes, to show Lord. this, God. We need to be that place where we could give you away freely, God. Because we get so stingy with you as if we can ever run out, help God. Us, help us. May we change it, oh God. May yes. we acknowledge God. May we not take it that we know God because that's the attitude we have adapted lately. I know that already with an amen here and an amen there. And the time yes. in a God of yes. oh God. But may we know that we are accountable for what we hear, oh God. And yes. this word is in season word, God, because we ought to love like you have loved us, God. Yeah, we ought to yeah. pour it out as you have poured it out to us, God. So yes, Lord, God. bless your servant, oh God. Refill your Thank vessel, oh God. Yes, and Lord. Pour Refresh your Lord. Again, God, without being repentant for speaking your word, mm. God. Lord, your word declared that Paul preached. Until people yes. fell asleep and he revived yes. the dead God. Um, Your word revived the dead God. May we um, desire to come alive in the name of Jesus. Jesus. May we not get so comfortable in our home where we cash out a hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, May we not be too busy to cook and to eat, God. But remember, us, the God. greater part is in your presence. Yeah. Yeah. Because you are the provider for the job, God. For the food, yeah. for the hallelujah. house, for the family. If you don't keep, if you don't watch, everything we do is in vain, Jesus. God. May yeah. we get everything. this word in the name of Jesus. Yes, May we Lord. desire life eternally, God. All oh, this was said to us today, God. May yes, we truly yes. desire the good path, Lord. We yes, thank Lord. you, God, for each other. God bless Thanks. and keep us until we come each and meet one of again. Us, in Jesus' name. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.